Journalism has played a key role in educating people on what's occurring in their community. In many cases, journalism may not change the outcome or completely rid the world of the types of conflicts that exist, but by teaching and educating people to another perspective, and can inspire the idea of change in those who are willing to listen. Ida B. Wells was the first female journalist to bring the world's attention to the lynching of black people that started to gain popularity in the South following the Civil War. It's journalists like her that have created the foundation on how to challenge the system by exposing the truth. Born four years before the early stages of Reconstruction and five years before the war officially ended in 1861, Ida B. Wells and her parents were some of the first freed slaves to personally partake in the benefits from the Emancipation of Proclamation. Her father trained as a carpenter, and Ida herself was able to attend school, getting a good education. When she was 16, both her parents died during a yellow fever epidemic, and she had to take care of her five siblings by working as a teacher. Wells eventually made her way to Memphis, Tennessee, where on her train ride there, she was told to move from her seat to the colored section. She refused as she had bought a first-class ticket and was sitting in the correct area. When Wells later reflected on being removed, she commented, The moment he caught hold of my arm, I fastened my teeth on the back of his hand. I had braced my feet against the seat in front and was holding to the back, and as he had already been badly bitten, he didn't try it again by himself. He went forward and got one of the baggage men, and another man, to help him, and of course they succeeded in dragging me out. They were encouraged to do this by the attitude of the white ladies and gentlemen in the car. Some of them even stood on the seats so that they could get a good view, and continued applauding the conductor for his brave stand. She later sued due to segregation, and won in the lower courts, being awarded $500, but the case was overturned in the state's Supreme Court. This incident started her on a path to begin writing articles under the pseudonym of Iola about her case, incidences of segregation, violence against Blacks, unequal education, and the lack of power Blacks were afforded in the Evening Star and the Living Way Weekly. After being laid off from her teaching position for her writings, she eventually became editor and co-owner of a Black-owned newspaper in Memphis called The Free Speech and Headlight with J.L. Fleming. As Reconstruction began to disintegrate under the oppressive terror of Jim Crow and the lynching of her close friend Tom Moss, Ida Wells did take on the fight to expose the increase in lynchings against Black people in the South. Tom Moss and his two friends were beaten and hung for daring to run a Black-run store that competed with a local white store. This begins kind of a new phase of her work, in that she becomes an investigative journalist. It is with no pleasure that I have dipped my hands in the corruption here exposed, Wells wrote in 1892 in the introduction to Southern Horrors, one of her seminal works about lynching. Somebody must show that the Afro-American race is more sinned against than sinning, and it seems to have fallen upon me to do so. Through her work, Wells was able to expose the horrific and terrorist nature of lynching against Black people. As Professor Emeritus of African American Studies at Smith College and author of Ida, A Sword Among Lions, Paula J. Giddings wrote, Wells of course sees the stereotypes about Black men raping white women. She starts investigating these accusations. She actually goes to the scenes of lynchings. She interviews witnesses. Eventually, Wells concluded that this idea of rape and even criminal behavior is not so much connected to lynching, but that lynching was a means to keep blacks, who are very economically competitive at this point, was to keep blacks down. Giddings writes, Wells also discovered in many cases where rape was used as the reason for lynching was usually consensual acts between a black man and a white woman. After gaining national attention for exposing the horrors of lynching, Wells, who was out of the state, returned to her hometown to find her newspaper building destroyed. This destruction eventually led Wells to abandon living in the South. She toured England and continued her anti-lynching campaign, which was well received by the public. She eventually found herself in Chicago, where she married Ferdinand Barnett, who was a well-known attorney in Chicago and changed her name to Wells Barnett. Wells Barnett continued her activism, co-founding the NAACP with W.E.B. Du Bois, where the two eventually grew ideologically opposed to the other. Wells Barnett established a black suffrage organization, black kindergarten, and black women's club. She continued to heavily influence movements and challenge the mainstream notion of black men being violent and rapists. 
She made the country aware and acknowledged the horrors their citizens partook against other human beings in order to continue its dominance and oppression over those who the Civil War had granted freedom. Wells Barnett was a woman who saw the racism and corruption of the system and was not afraid to challenge it no matter the cost. And it's because of her bravery, resilience, and search for the truth and fight for what was just, we remember and celebrate her. Thank you.